We're going to be reviewing a Dynasty rookie draft. This one's an actual draft sent in by a subscriber. This is his home league draft. There are some random picks, but the randomness is what you see in home leagues. That is something we need to look at more because those random picks do happen from time to time. ADP drafting isn't always a thing, so we have to be open-minded. We have to look at the oddball drafts as well. This is super flex. This is four rounds, but you need to click that subscribe button right now because we're covering the market for Dynasty Fantasy Football for rookie drafts, super flex, startups, whatever it is. We cover it here. We look at the rookies. We look at the training camps. We get you ready for end season. We help you build your teams. Click that button. Stop missing out. But it's time to look at the first pick. Remember, it's super flex. So who do you think is coming off the board here? Because it's one of two players, and from what I've seen on the hit rate, this player gets drafted 95% of the time. The other 5% is the other guy. Who do you think those guys are? But coming off the board at the 101, Caleb Williams, 101, and 95% of Superflex drafts. The 5% is the next guy coming off the board. I think, I don't remember the draft anymore, but Caleb Williams is holding strong on that 101 value in Superflex. We all knew he was going to the Bears pre-draft, and he's holding strong to that value and a lot of people love him and if you don't like him just trade back and get some equity out of that get something for him get something back there don't be locked in there but again in super flex quarterbacks hold value for a long time even jabroni quarterbacks hold value and get something for him so make that pick hold that stock see what happens moving on to 102 next player coming off the board probably guessed it but it's Marvin Harrison Jr. locked in as the 102. Sometimes a quarterback goes in the spot, usually Jaden Daniels. Marvin Harrison Jr. though, locked in at 102, usually in super flex drafts. Marvin Harrison Jr. is a pretty safe pick for rookie drafts this year, whether it's 1QB or super flex. I do not mind you taking him at 101 if you really want him. I like him a lot. I think the portfolio is pretty good for him. But we're moving on to the 103. And coming off the board here, Jaden Daniels. Sometimes he goes 102. I think a lot of drafts he goes 102. I see him coming off the board a lot at 102. Really depends on your preference here. But Jaden Daniels has that rushing floor and also can sling it deep. He also has some weapons there in Washington with Terry McLaurin and company. So that could smooth out the process of development for him, which could allow him to be productive as a rookie this year, which is something we want. But we got to move on to the next pick here at 104. Now things are starting to be a little different here. At 104 coming off the board, Malik Neighbors. I like him a lot. I like him a lot. I don't mind taking him over quarterbacks. I just don't mind it because I garner him as a safe generational talent. I think he's got a lot of upside. The odds are good for him. The odds are good for him to hit. I look for him to, to be very good at the NFL level, be very good for fantasy. I look for him to maybe become one of the top wide receivers in the league sooner than later. You're going to know pretty quick. Now we're going to the 105, though. We're going to the 105. Do you think quarterback's coming off the board? Do you think so? Nope, it's Romo Dunze. Romo Dunze coming off the board here. The quarterbacks are slipping a little bit in this draft. You can tell that there might be some more one QBers in this league than super flexers. This might be a newer league. Or quarterbacks are more liquid than you think. If quarterbacks are very liquid in your league, you might have more flexibility. I'm not going to say, hey, draft those wide receivers and running backs over those quarterbacks. Because over time, once you get into your league, five years, ten years, four years, two years, whatever. Whatever the time has to take. Some leagues are different than others. Those quarterbacks will start creeping up in value. Even though you don't usually have those super flex gamers in there or those people who are new to the super flex, they'll figure it out real quick. But moving on to 106, coming off the board, we got Drake, May, Drink, Me. Coming down at 106, sometimes he goes 103, sometimes 104, 105. 106 is a good deal for super flex. I think this is very cheap. Him going to the Patriots has a lot of people skeptical over that. But that being said, quarterback coming off the board, he's going to hold some value. He's going to hold a little bit more value than the 106. If you don't like him, you can always sell. And if he does hit, his value's through the roof. His value's through the roof. Big time if he does hit. That's a stock that you speculate on, you hope for the best. Next coming off the board here, 107, Xavier Worthy going to the Chiefs. 
And him and Patrick Mahomes with that 4-2 speed, his ability to create separation vertically and breaking off routes is the chef's kiss, is the chief's kiss. And I like him. That's the perfect spot for him or for any wide receiver. But we got to move on to the 108. Coming off the 108 pick here, not really a surprise anymore. And I said he was going to move up. I mean, he's going to move up more than this. I think this is a great deal. J.J. McCarthy at 108. 108, cheap price still for a quarterback getting drafted in the first round with Justin Jefferson there to catch balls from. That being said, I think that's a great price tag. I think that's one of the better price tags you can get at the quarterback position. Not much more expensive than Will Levis last year. You can definitely say that. I think he's in a prime location. I think you're going to know very quickly whether he's going to be a hitter or not, which is something I like out of my players because I don't want to hoard them on my roster hoping they hit forever, hoping that I can get something in return, especially when the stock gets kind of fluky. 108 is a great price tag. JJ McCarthy's got some weapons there. He's got a lot of upside. He's got the draft capital. Now we got to put things together. Now we got a steal here. We got a big steal here. And he goes a little earlier than this, but the quarterback's kind of making things weird. The usual suspects went off the board. We don't have anything really as a big surprise, but at 109, Brock Bowers could be that piece that really puts your lineup over the top if he hits. Got the size, just athleticism. He's going to be a big slot for the Raiders. He's going to be a big slot starting off. No one put that together when he got drafted. And when I was doing my reaction video, it clicked in the middle of that because I started things off one way and then went another way. That Those are raw reactions that I do during the combine and the draft. Like the pick happens, I run here and I shoot the video. And I go off my initial feelings. And those feelings are going off during the video too. And I went da-da-da-da. And then it clicked. Big slot. Big slot receiver during the start of his career. And then as he develops, he's going to be much more. Which is a good thing for the tight end spot. Also, those wide receivers don't stay healthy. That being said, could be seeing more opportunities than expected. But we got to move on to the next pick here. Coming off the board at the 110 spot, Lad McConkey. He's a hardball boy. And hardball loves dependable players. What do you think Lad McConkey is? The route running, the hands, the separation. I think this is a good fit. He should get funneled targets. The volume in the offense, I'm still leery of. But again, 110, you're looking at this range of wide receivers. And here, you're kind of just picking your poison. I don't I don't hate it. I don't hate it. There's other wide receivers I like. But I'm also diversifying and balancing between them as well. But we got to move on to our next player coming off the board here. We're at the 111. We're almost done with the first round. But here, we're going to be seeing Jonathan Brooks. I liked him a little earlier. I like getting Jonathan Brooks in drafts whenever I feel leery on the wide receivers or if I feel like I can just get one in the second round, I grab Jonathan Brooks. Usually playing the board of the draft and when I don't get Jonathan Brooks, it's because I feel like I've drafted him too much at that moment and I feel like I need to pivot and diversify. That being said, I like him a lot. I like him a lot. I think this is a great spot to get a running back. Great spot to get a running back at his skill set. He's going to be catching balls out of the backfield. He's in a good situation. Moving on to the next pick, though. Last pick of the first round, coming off the board, Brian Thomas Jr. He's a volatile asset. I can see him hitting the moon. I see his floor being very low. But the thing is, he's paired with Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence wants to throw the deep ball. Look at his advanced metrics. He wants to throw the deep ball. This could be a good marriage. Ridley's gone. Him getting vertical. If he hits, he's going to hit big. That's the thing about him. If he hits, he's going to hit big. If you're going to swing for the fence, try and hit the home run. Try and hit the home run. This is a player that can do it. He's got the draft capital. He's got the quarterback. We talked about the skill set a lot. Very fast release. Very good downfield. And if everything clicks, and if he develops and takes a step forward, this could be a surprise option in the draft. The downside's there. Like I said, volatile option. When I say volatile option to people, when I'm talking about players, your brain goes volatile too because some people think of the low and some people think of the high. Think of both. Think of both because they're both there. They're both there. Don't fanboy over players because that is ridiculous. Just don't do it because the range of outcomes are the range of outcomes. He's got one year production. We can make a story behind that. But we've done that with every other player as well that's had one year of production. But we see the tape. We see the situation. We see the draft capital. That lends to here. The production says, hey, we could hit here. 
it's just part of it. It's just part of it. And we're either going to get it right or not. But sometimes you got to make that pick. Here's the first round, though. Not too bad. Not too bad. Jaden Daniels going 103. And then quarterback slipped the 106 with Drake May. Quarterback's a little bit light for Superflex. I'll say that. But it really depends on your league. This could be a league where quarterbacks are more liquid. This could be a league where there's quarterbacks on the waiver wire. Like the Jabronis are there. Maybe the rosters are not as deep as what I'm expecting. Maybe they don't like quarterbacks as much. Maybe this is a newer league. Maybe people are filling out the super flex process. That could be a different thing. Marvin, Malik, good spots. Xavier Worthy, okay. Brock Bowers, okay. Lad McConkey, 110. People argue for and against that guy very hard. Are you? Are you? Where are you at on him? Because some people think he should be up with Roma Dunze. There are a few people. There are a few people that are cool with 110. And then there's some people who think he needs to be at 205. I see it. I see it. Jonathan Brooks, I think that's a great price for him. I said my piece on Brian Thomas. If you're going to draft a volatile wide receiver, 112 is a good price tag for that. But we're going to move on to the second round. We're going to go through a little quicker here, considering we're getting deeper into the draft. But coming off the board in the second round at the 201 spot, Bo Nix going to the Broncos. This is a quarterback play. Cheap get for a quarterback getting drafted in the first round. Odds are not as good for him to hit, but he should hold some super flex value. And if you're playing strategy with super flex, I'm fine with it. Keon Coleman, 202, and he's fallen back in some of these drafts. He had a push up after the draft, but the thing about this, the tape's still there, but I do like the landing spot a lot. If you take him over Lad McConkey at the 110 spot, I don't hate you for it. I don't mind it. He's in that range where you're just jockeying those wide receivers on the back nine of the first round. I do like Brian Thomas Jr. over him due to the quarterback situation, the draft capital, the speed, and everything else. But I do love the landing spot here. I think I like the price tag at 202. AD Mitchell, 203, a little bit too rich for my blood. Michael Pittman's going to own the target share. He should be owning it. 25% easy. 22 on the low. Probably more like 30% range. Maybe like 27 to 28%, something like that. But he should be owning a lot of the targets. Jonathan Taylor's there. Josh Downs is there. You got quarterbacks learning the game. He's going to be a volatile option if he hits. He's going to be a splash play. More than likely, he's going to get a good ADOT. We're going to be ADOT chasing in DFS with AD Mitchell for sure. 204, Michael Penix. You're playing the quarterback strategy for Superflex just in case he gets that opportunity. He does have some good weapons there. Again, the odds are kind of stacked against him. We got Kirk Cousins. He's catching a bag there with the Falcons. But still, 204, you got to take shots at quarterback, especially at this price tag in Superflex. Is Avery Leggett, 205. I'm fine here. I got to see what else is on the board. I'm talking. I'm doing commentary, so I really got to think that through. But 205, just looking at the pick, looking at his face, and I think of him as a player and even more volatile than what I said before. And he's either going to be here or he's going to be here. There's no way he's going to hover in this league as a wide receiver 40, wide receiver 35 type of player. Wide receiver 60 even. I just don't see that happening. I see him either hitting at a very high level or busting big time. I just do not see anything in between. Trey Benson, 206. I love this value. He fell too far. You guys should not let a running back like this fall too far in the draft. We got good draft capital. We're in a good situation. We have good size of just athleticism. The production good enough the tape is good the tape's good we do have some red flags but still 206 tremendous price tag you slept on benson troy franklin 207 i like him a shade cheaper but i like this price tag than what i've saw in other drafts 203 204 207 a little better but those were one qb maybe that's up a little bit 210 is like my sweet spot for troy franklin 208 for ricky pierce saw a lot of people are arguing against him but the market's pushing him down anyways to where he's a cheap prospect there's other wide receivers i do like as well but 208 and you're looking at a first round wide receiver the first round draft capital gives you an indicator that his odds are a little bit more likely than a third round wide receiver he's going to the niners Debo and Ayuk's not going to be there too much longer. Maybe another year or so. Ricky Pearsall is going to get opportunities. Can he hit? Does he have the upside? We shall see. But at 208, that's a good price tag to dance with. Blake Corum, though, at 209, I like him. I like getting running backs in the second round of this year's draft. 
I would take him over Pearsall just to get that running back, just to get that upside at the running back position. When you think about your leagues right before the trade deadline or right before the playoffs when trades are happening, if you don't have a deadline, those running backs who are on the back end of the roster, those backups who are starting to jump into opportunity, those are the most fluid. Think about those in your third and fourth round, even this part of the draft, even those more pricier running backs. That's why I'm looking at Blake Corum here because he's an asset I can sit on and feel good about. But at 210, Ben Sinat, this is early. This is early. You're getting your tight end. I do not like paying up for tight ends. The market's saying, hey, third round, fourth round, more than likely middle third round is the right price. 210's too rich for my blood. Javon Baker, 211. I like him a lot. I think this is fine for a talent perspective but reading the market this is too rich this is too rich i'd rather catch him in the third round but if this is your only pick and this is your guy this is your only league sure sure go ahead and get your guy if you're in a lot of leagues and you're playing the market you overpay 212 jalen wright i think this is cheap i think you're sleeping on jalen wright in this league i think he needs to be up there i get it he's a home run swing because he does have a volatile profile but he's on the Dolphins. He fits well with his team. He's got 4-3 speed. His upside's immense. Take swings on upside players. And everything's saying, hey, take a swing on this kid. But here's the second round. Bo Nix, Keon Coleman, A.D. Mitchell. Solid. A.D. Mitchell's a little bit pricey. He's able to get. Boom bust. Trey Benson's a discount. Troy Franklin, I like him a shade cheaper. I like Blake Corm at cost. Ben Sinat, what are you guys doing? Javon Baker, I love him a lot. That might be the starting if I'm paying up. If I'm paying up, you're paying up. But you're overpaid. Jalen Wright is so cheap. But we're going to the third round. We're going to keep this quick. Jalen McMillan, 303. Fine, good route runner, but that depth chart's locked up right now. Audric Estimate, 302. You're overpaid. You overpaid. This depth chart's got to turn and burn a little bit. Javante Williams isn't going to be there forever. His contract's up soon. Autrick Esme could be your guy. So if you're swinging for the fence, go ahead. I guess 303 Roman Wilson, third round wide receiver going to third round of a rookie draft. This is probably the right price tag for him. But he's going to the Steelers. We know the narrative behind that. The Steelers make these third round wide receivers look good. Jermaine Burton at 304. He should be kissing the second round a little bit more due to him being on the Bengals, getting that Bengals privilege, also having that speed, that release package. He's also a very volatile option in fantasy. If he doesn't hit, if he doesn't give you a return on investment soon or the Bengals a return on investment, they're moving on. 305 Malachi Corley. You just see him getting an 8 out of like 3 and you need him spammed with targets. And then you look at Garrett Willis and you're like, oh, he's getting all the targets. And you're like, Malachi Corley. If you hit, it's going to be volatile. 306 Jalen Polk. So the Patriots turn things around because of him and Javon Baker. So you're taking that upside. You're taking that gamble. 307 Ray Davis. I love this pick. Very safe pick. I think he's going to catch some upside. I think he's going to get some work between the tackles. They worked hard trying to find a second running back to compliment Cook. They could not do that. They needed another running back because of that. Bills fans were all up in my comments saying that. Ray Davis is the guy for that. 307 is a good price tag for that. 308, Will Shipley. Again, running back, running back, running back at this part of the draft, especially if you're looking to flip assets around trade deadline time because Will Shipley could be getting some runs, some opportunity if Saquon goes down or when Saquon goes down. And he could be holding RB1, RB2 results if he's getting those touches because he's on the Eagles. 309, Marshawn Lloyd, incredibly cheap. People are scared of Josh Jacobs. I'm not. Josh Jacobs is going to get so many touches, they're going to run him into the ground. We're going to talk about Marshawn Lloyd some more. I'm going to do a full video on him because I think it needs done. 309, too cheap. I love the value. Kamadi Vidal. And I love the value here at 310. I love shooting your shot on him. I think this is a great depth chart for him. I think he's got plenty of upside. 311, JT Sanders. A good spot to go tight end on if you want to go tight end. 311, 312, fourth round in this draft. If their name is not Brock Bowers, either leave them all alone or just get them super cheap. 312, Bucky Irvin. I think this is a great spot. I saw him go in the second round of the last draft, but that was one QB. But still, 312, a good price. Going over round three real quick. Jermaine Barton, good discount. Remain. Roman Wilson, good discount. Audrey Gestime, a little high. Jalen Polk, a good gamble. Ray Davis, a very safe play. Marshawn Lloyd, damn cheap. 
damn cheap. I just want to move on after reading that. So we're going to the fourth round. Here we go, Spencer Rattler and Superflex at 401. What are you guys doing? I forgot it was Superflex and then I saw his face. He needs to go in the third, maybe push for the second. This is way too cheap. I get he fell in the draft, but it's quarterback or nothing in Superflex, especially when this league gets older. And I'm feeling like this is a newer league. That being said, Spencer Rattler, pay up a little bit more in Superflex. Braylon Allen, 402 is great for him considering he's going to be a backup unless something happens to Brees Hall. Rasheen Ali, I like taking stabs at him. I like him as a flyer. Jordan Travis, super flex, good in the fourth round. If you want to push in the third, go ahead. Malik Washington, a great fourth rounder with the upside here with the Dolphins. The Dolphins is always going to give you upside when you're looking at these flyers. Brendan Rice at 406, better than the second round, better than the third round. I think this is a good price for him. Luke McCaffrey, I don't like him. Tez Walker, I don't really like him, but he could be a boom bust play. Ike is back with the Niners. I would take him much earlier than the 409 because of the size of just athleticism. If Christian McCaffrey goes down, you can flip him for a return on the investment and get you back something nice. Dylan Labe, he's got running backs in front of him that don't catch passes too often. He could be the change of pace. He could be the change up to those fastballs. That being said, 410. Great price tag. Tyrone Tracy, again, hammering running backs, which you should be doing in the fourth round here because if they catch any opportunity, you can flip them in season. 412, Chase McClellan, same thing, same thing. And it is a super flex draft. So we're seeing quarterbacks still come off the board in the fourth round. Braylon Allen, Rasheen Ali, we're seeing the running backs come off the board here. Some running backs should have been drafted a little bit earlier. I like the Brennan Rice price tag. I think things are looking good in this draft. I can definitely see where the picks were a little bit weird. I think I called those out. Maybe there were some others that you didn't like, but that's your turn to call those out in the comments below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button on the way out. I want to thank you for watching. Catch you on the next video.